Time now for Morning Rounds with CBS News contributor Dr. Tara Narula and Dr. Christopher Visco, Director of Sports Medicine at New York Presbyterian Columbia University Medical Center. First up, controlling blood pressure. The CDC estimates that 70% of U.S. adults age 65 and up have high blood pressure, and nearly half don't have it under control. A new report from the CDC shows that millions of Americans are putting themselves at risk by not taking their blood pressure medication properly. Tara, what's the most troubling aspect of this study? This was such an important study. It basically looked at 18 and a half million Americans in 2014 enrolled in Medicare Advantage or Medicare Part D. And what they found is that 5 million of those Americans are not taking their blood pressure medications as prescribed. They're either not taking them at all or skipping doses. In addition, they found some variability in terms of racial and ethnic backgrounds. So American Indians, African Americans, and Hispanics also more likely to be non-compliant. In addition, where you lived in the country seemed to make a difference. So those in the southern states were also less likely to be taking their blood pressure meds appropriately. How dangerous is it if you're skipping one or forgetting about it? Is it often forgetting about it or is it a conscious? So there were a lot of uh, theories proposed by these authors. Some include costs, so, so some blood pressure medicines are costly. Some is simply just forgetting to take it. Mm -hmm. um, other issues have to do with side effects. So if you don't like the way you feel, you might stop taking it. Um, and then they also said, what I, which I think is the most important, is that some people feel well. They say, well, I don't feel any problems, mm. so I'm just not going to take my medication. And that's probably the most dangerous. It's why we call hypertension the silent killer. Most of the times you don't feel symptoms, but it's damaging your arteries the entire time, arteries to your head, your kidneys, your heart. It can get confusing for seniors, though, who are very often on multiple medications. So what, what advice do you give them? Right. So some of the things they can do is to speak to their doctor about getting a 90-day supply of their medications. So they don't have to remember to go to the pharmacy at 30 days, mm -hmm. get a weekly pill bottle, write down a list of all their medications, and understand why they're taking them. So often patients come in my office and they have no idea which one is the cholesterol medicine, which one's the blood pressure medicine. Enlist the help of your loved ones uh, to help you remember to take your meds. And also the pharmacist can be a great resource for people as well. Moving on this morning, millions of American kids will play soccer this fall, but as the popularity of the sport rises, so does the risk of injury. A new study from the journal Pediatrics found that from 1990 through 2014, nearly 3 million children aged 7 to 17 were treated for soccer-related injuries in emergency rooms. The rate of injuries more than doubled in that 15-year span. So Chris, if you're going to the ER, it's not a skin knee. You, you've got a serious injury. What are the most common? We see a variety of injuries that come into the emergency room that are from this study looks at the rates of concussion, the rates of soft tissue injury, and the rates of um, fractures coming into the emergency room. And they're uh, much higher than they have been in 1998. So we see an increase in um, the rate of injury, um, an increase in the prevalence, and an increase in the number of, uh, of people actually playing soccer. And this is for youth sports at age 7 to 17. Chris, concussions in, in kids are uh, obviously particularly of concern. I mean, are, is, is the rate going up, do you think, because people are just more aware of it? It's, we're way more conscious of them now? The awareness of concussion has increased dramatically since 2008-2009. Um, yeah. So looking at the trend line, the rate actually increases um, quite a bit. This started around 2009 when the first legislation occurred in the state of Washington. Um, and this really happened because of uh, some injuries to some kids that ended up going back immediately after they had concussion into play. So do you think, there, do you think the rate of concussions is actually going up or just it's being more reported because people are more aware? People are more aware now because, yeah. of, because of the rules to come out. So the um, number one thing to do if you have a concussion is to get out of play, yeah. to be assessed on the sideline. And um, people are aware of that now, and so they're actually taking action. The coaches, the athletic trainers, and, the and parents, parents. Right, parents are the ones that often have to start that dialogue. That's right. All right, finally, with the NFL season in full swing, fans are looking for ways to show their team pride, and among the options are revised color rush uniforms. The first color rush jerseys introduced last season were hard for colorblind people to see. For example, last November, the New York Jets and Buffalo Bills donned monochromatic all green and all red jerseys, making it hard for some TV viewers to tell the difference between the teams. This year, after consulting with medical experts, the NFL introduced new color-friendly jersey combos. And as we saw on Thursday night's Bills-Jets game, New York wore all white 
just to be safe. Isn't that funny? I bet a lot of people at home just diagnose themselves as colorblind, well, seeing a show. Because I am colorblind. Oh, so. I, oh you are. <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah. I, I mean, some some colors I clearly see the difference, and some they just like. It's like it's gone. Well, luckily, you were of men, they said, of yeah. northeastern descent. I had no idea it was that prevalent. Used to alarm my mother when I would look at the television and say, "Look at that man in the green shirt," and she'd go, "There is no green shirt." <laughs> <laughs> All right, Doctors Terna Rula and Christopher Visco, thank you both so much.